Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike. And I wasn't intending to make a video tonight, but Mrs. Captain just left town, left me for a week to go take care of her niece's kids. And she wasn't gone, but two minutes. And I'm at the closest liquor store. I went to three stores, picked up four new bottles today. I thought, man, I'm pretty excited about this pickup. I'm gonna open this new one here. Give it a go. We'll talk about this one. Just briefly introduce these two, or these three, and then full review for these will be coming up. But hopefully not too long of a video today. While we have a little pour of 1792 Bottled and Bond. I'm pretty excited about this one. Not really on my hit list, but I've been keeping my eyes open for the different 1792 expressions the sweet wheat the bottle and bond the 12 year of course these are all whiskeys that i've been looking for but they're not really i've got to have them but when i saw it on the shelf there i went ahead and picked it up but let's talk about uh what we have here 1792 bottled and bond this is a single barrel select from corona cigar company in tampa and i was not intending to stop by there today. I didn't know where they were. My first time into this store, and when I say store, it's really kind of like a cigar lounge bar, and they do sell a very small select bottles. So I was driving around. I just love Total Wine and more, and ups pops on Facebook that they had the Kentucky Peerless Double Oak. So I made my way over to the cigar our Corona Cigar Company, intending to just pick up the Kentucky Peerless, and they had two of the bottles that I was really excited about. 1792, bottled and bond. It's non-age stated, mash bill undisclosed. It's described as a high rye mash bill. 100 proof, and I paid $49.95 for this bottle. That's pretty exciting to me. I don't know what it goes on the secondary market. I think that's if not MSRP, pretty close to MSRP. Anyway, let's see what we have. And just, just barely opened it, brought it home, connected the camera, and here we go. I'm not done a lot of 1792. I've had maybe two bottles of the small batch in my lifetime. I picked up their full proof earlier this year. I did a review on that uh, about a month or so ago. And I do really like that full proof. That was a very nice pour. The bottle and bonds expressions that I've had, I think through this year have been pretty nice. I really like bottle and bond products and I don't know exactly if it's just because you know they're at least four years old. I don't know what it is about the bottle and bond, but almost every one of those I've had, I've enjoyed throughout all the different uh, distilleries. So definitely excited about this one. 1792, I feel like is, if you go back to the small batch, it's very kind of typical rye notes with a rye, I'm sorry, bourbon notes with a rye twist to it. And we, again, we don't know what the mash bill is. There's a couple of websites that say, this is probably what it is, but uh, I'm not gonna mess with that since it's really, really unknown. This is a fainter note than the, than the foolproof. Maybe I would expect a little more presence from 100 proof, but that's not really that much of a step up above the, uh, the small batch. The small batch is in the 90s, and I can't remember exactly, 93, I think, and, and change. It, it, it's a little faint, but I definitely some rye notes in there in those typical bourbon notes, just some vanilla, and maybe some oak in there. Definitely a nice rye kick to this bourbon. Anyway, cheers. Mm. Again, it's just forward with the rye spice. There's some vanilla hitting. It just, it just exactly what you would expect from the nose. Rye forward, some vanilla, some oak in there and those nice bourbon notes. 
I think it's uh, man, it's a little, a little warming now. This is the first pour I've had today. I've been running around Tampa for quite a while. Been home for a bit. First pour. <clears throat> so it slots in pretty well proof wise, I think between the small batch and the full proof. I mean, it's closer to the small batch proof than it is to the full proof, which is 125. And again, all of those are non-age stated and we don't know how many barrels are in uh, a small batch, if they're all from the same year, probably from different years, I would imagine. Whereas this is a single barrel, so that's even kind of more uh, stringent on the bottled and bond rules, where it's a single distillation season from a single distillery. We know this is a single barrel, which is pretty cool. It's a nice mouthfeel. It's not awesome or overwhelming. It's, it's, it's just very nice. Very nice, typical bourbon notes. A little bit of warmth from the 100 proof. <sighs> Maybe it finishes a little sweeter than you would think as you, from your initial sip and from the nose, but overall, it's a nice whiskey. So when I went out today, first of all, I went to Total Wine & More there in Tampa and I just seen what they had, and lo and behold, they had one of the Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof rice. I am starting to see these on the shelf more, and I think that, you know, they promise that it's going to be a shelf stable type product. So if in your area you haven't seen any of these, or you've only seen them at secondary or high prices, just pass, pass of those stores, and just a little bit of patience, and I think you're gonna see the, Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rise in your area soon. I did pay $74.99 for this bottle. On come the glasses. This is 128, 128.6 proof. My other bottle I believe is 130.2. I'm not gonna go through all the specs and stats of this. Uh, 128.6 proof, I paid $74.99 and it's Jack Daniels single barrel, barrel proof rye. What else? So then I left this store, didn't have anything else that I wanted. I was looking for maybe the new Bookers. I was looking for the Knob Creek 15, a couple other on my list and Total Wine and More didn't have any of them. So I went to a different store, didn't buy anything there. And then I saw that at Corona, they had the uh, Kentucky Peerless Double Oak. So I went over there and I got three bottles. First thing I saw, catches my eye, of course, is High West. And yes, I bought another High West Barrel Select item. This is the Double Rye, and it is finished in brandy. I have not had the High West Double Rye finished in brandy. And this was finished in a brandy barrel. So this was for the Corona Cigar Company. One year and five months of finish time. So this was finished for 17 months in brandy barrels. That's pretty exciting to me. That's quite a long finish time. Uh, ABV, 51.1. And how much do you think I paid for this bad boy? What do you think? When she said 49.99, I was like, yeah, I'll take one for sure. I probably should have bought more than one, but I'm kind of loaded up on the High West Barrel Select items right now so i just just got one off the shelf didn't want to get greedy pick this bad boy up and look down a little lower they had the 1792 bottled and bond so i took that from the shelf as well and i probably would have bought the kentucky peerless double oaked rye over the bourbon but they didn't have any of the double oaks kind of behind the cash register as you're walking out, they were all over in the bar area. So I took these two bottles, I carried them over to the bar area. These ladies were working their rear ends off, taking care of the guys at the bar. And I think I was kind of intruding, but that's what she told me to do. I'm like, hey, so she rang these up for me. In fact, they didn't have the price for these at the cash register. So I ended up at the bar where she rang these up for me. I'm like, hey, I'm really here for the Kentucky Peerless Double Oak. And 
and it was just kind of mass confusion there. So I ended up with a Kentucky Peerless Double Oak Bourbon, which, you know, I'm 100% excited about this. I do have the Double Oak Rye from Kentucky Peerless that I paid $134 for. I paid $99.99 for this Kentucky Peerless Double Oak Bourbon at the Corona Cigar Company. It's a single barrel. I believe it's barrel strength, which is only 107.2 proof. Kentucky Peerless, I do believe their barrel entry proof is 107. It was raised legally a number of years ago to 125. It used to be 110. And I've done the Kentucky Peerless distillery tour twice now. And it's, oh, it's been a great time. Both times their tastings have been fantastic. And I believe the founder, the OG Kentucky Peerless, a founder thought that for some reason 107 was the perfect barrel entry proof. And so they've, as they renew their license and their distillery, they stuck with 107. That's why Kentucky Peerless is such a low barrel entry proof or barrel, single barrel barrel proof at 107.2. I'm also a big fan of Double Oaks. The first time I had the Woofer Reserve Double Oak, I was like, what is this goodness in my mouth? And so I went by to get this, ended up with these. I didn't get the rye, but I'm happy to have the bourbon to contrast it with my Kentucky Peerless Rye Double Oak. And I can see a Double Oak bourbon and I have a few Double Oak rye. So I think some Double Oak rye, a uh, blind or challenge, it would be appropriate coming forward in 2024. Have you had this? I mean, 99 bucks. That seems like a lot and I am, but I'm excited about that. Again, I'm not gonna get into any specs on our stats on these whiskeys. So my final thought on the uh, 1792 bottled and bond, should you buy this? I think if you go to the store and all they have is the small batch and the bottled and bond and you've never had it, I think it is a decent pour. It's enough uh, distinct from the small batch that, that it's worth picking up. Now, if you go to the store and they happen to have this on the shelf next to the foolproof, and you can only buy one for some reason, then go with the foolproof. I mean, no question. The 1792 foolproof is the same price, $49.99, or at least the MSRP. That's what I paid for mine. And it is by far, I think, a superior pour to the bottled and bond from what I've had so far anyway. It's just less potent and less flavorful and certainly less powerful, you know, packs less of a punch with less, with the 100 proof. But it is unique enough from the small batch. I would say if you have a chance to pick this up and you like the small batch, go ahead and give this a try. All right, my guys, that's my video for tonight. Uh, it wasn't too long a day at work, but tomorrow I've got a super long day. So you know what to do, my guys. I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn to the pages and stay thirsty, my friends. Cheers. Mm -hmm.